All right, folks, let's review the top skincare trends of 2023. You do not want to miss this. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon, founder and creator of Karam MD Skin. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And on today's episode of Skin School, we're going to talk about some of the trends in 2023 and kind of one by one discuss them. Pros and cons, should they stay, good stuff, bad stuff, pointless stuff, you make your decision. Let's get right into it, all right? Trend number one, this is kind of a weird thing, I never thought I'd be saying this, but snail mucin. Who's heard of this? How many of you guys have heard of this? Well, it's been a lot more popular, a lot more talked about. You're like, what, what in the world is snail mucin? So snail mucin is basically, folks, you've seen a snail slither, right? And there's a kind of wet path that it leaves behind. In that path is substances that have some value for the skin. Things like hyaluronic acid, maybe even some peptides and things like that that stimulate collagen. Think of it this way. It's a moisturizer with a little bit of possible active qualities that increase collagen and do some of these other things, protective antioxidants, etc. However, at the end of the day, it takes a snail to make this stuff. So one of the obvious points is, well, how are you gonna make enough snail mucin to treat lots and lots of people? Well, then you have to grow lots and lots of snails, which then raises a whole concept and ethical issue of you know, farming snails. Is it ethical? Is it right? The vegans say no, animal rights folks say no. So it's created a lot of controversy actually. And, probably for good reason. At the end of the day, there's nothing so magical in snail mucin to justify going through all the trouble of handling and dealing with, with snails in a, in a farm-like you know, community. I honestly don't know exactly how they derive it, but it can't be you know, snail friendly, I guess. So at the end of the day, my personal feeling about it is probably more hype than actually what it's worth. I'm not aware of any overwhelming studies that say this is, you know, the next best thing, but there's been all sorts of stuff all throughout time that kind of like spark, uh, spark something, especially, you know, either plant or animal derived stuff that kind of gets everyone really excited about it. At the end, you realize it's not all that exciting. So in my opinion, probably one of those trends that we're not going to see too much hype about next year, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. All right. So the next trend red light devices folks red light devices you know they've been around for a long time what a red light basically led light that that shines in a particular wavelength spectrum that has impact on the skin so things like anti-inflammatory things like uh, increased blood flow things like stimulating collagen just you know all around being pretty good for your skin. LED lights, you can use them as panels, you can buy the handheld stuff, you can go into a spa and get them, you know, depending on the impact that the light wants to make on the skin in terms of its energy level. Sometimes you can't get those high energy panels at home, obviously, so you do something that will lower energy, you spend more time with it, etc. At the end of the day, this is what it comes down to. Not a bad thing, certainly not a bad thing. I use LED red light for my hair, you know, it's a, you know, those laser hats that you use to stimulate hair growth. I don't think it's a bad thing. Certainly there's no harm in it. Certainly there's some potential positives, some, you know, albeit mild, why not? I mean, if you're into it, I say go for it. There's nothing wrong with it at the end of the day. There's a lot of things we can do that have a lot of negative consequences. This isn't gonna be one of them. It's totally safe. Do it, improve uh, some circulation, some collagen st stimulation, some anti-inflammatory, why not? But here's the one thing I will say about it, and this is a common theme for a lot of things. Don't think about using it intermittently. In other words, don't use it here one week and then forget about it and use it again two weeks. It's not gonna do anything. If you're gonna go through the <clears throat> expense and trouble of, of buying one of these devices, whether it's for your hair, or whether it's for your facial skin, etc., you got to use it regularly. So, for example, with my red light laser cap, I use that every other day, and I've been using it for years, literally years, just like consistently every other day. Has it helped? I think it has. I mean, the hair feels a little thicker. You know, I don't know if would I be bald by now. I don't know would I have more hair loss. I don't know. I mean, it's it's a good thing my wife uses it uh, for her hair. The hair gets thinner as I think men and women. So it's a good thing in general. Use it regularly, every other day, consistent three four times a week. 
over time. You know, if you go on vacation, you can take a break, but generally speaking, consistency is a key with red light. Otherwise, a thumbs up on that one. The next trend is facial yoga. Now, as a facial plastic surgeon, I get asked all the time, if I move my face a lot, if I blow or like smile or do different things, like actively keeping those muscles moving, and I'm, I'm by no means a facial yoga yogi expert, right? I'm not one of those specialists in this particular field, so I'm kind of speaking out of, out of context here when I say this. However, what I will say is that it's certainly not gonna do any harm. The theory behind it is if you're actively using cer certain muscles, then the muscle is gonna stay toned and active and, and thicker, and therefore less likely to become gaunt and, and lax. As far as I know, there's literally no research or studies on this. I think it would be a hard study to, to have, by the way. Like, what are you gonna do? Follow 5,000, 10,000 people between the ages of 30 and 50 and then see who ages better can compare to control? Very, very difficult study design. Can't imagine anyone funding such a study because there's really, at the end of the day, there's no financial impact in you becoming a, a facial yoga person. No one's gonna sell you the yoga stuff. It's, it's kind of one of those things where, um, you know, ph big pharma makes a lot of money off of a research study that goes well because you buy the drug and et cetera. This type of thing is not gonna come out like that. So kind of on your own on this. Theoretically, not a bad thing. Theoretically, will it slow and stop aging? 100% is not gonna stop aging. I guarantee you that. There's no chance it's gonna stop aging. Will it slow it? I don't know, does it matter? I mean, just do it. I guess if you wanna, you know, you wanna err on that side, you don't mind going through the, the, the process, do it. Personally, I'm probably not gonna do it. Um, you know, I don't have enough belief in it to go through that extra time and energy that it takes to learn it and apply it, but that's me. And I don't even know if you can talk to somebody who's had a positive experience with it because their aging genetics are gonna be different than yours. At the end of the day, if you've got time in your day, you want to go through the exercises, I assume it doesn't take a lot of time, try it, no big deal. But it is definitely a trending topic. I get asked about it a lot, I see it you know, discussed a lot, but at the end of the day, it's not something that we're very bullish on. Next category is microcurrent. And this is, you know, the big names like New Face and there's a number of other ones that are out there and New Face is one of the original ones. So what this is doing is it's creating some stimulation, electrical stimulation at the level of the muscle so that the muscle contracts, right? It creates contraction. Contraction is kind of like what we're talking about with facial yoga, but it's a little bit different in the sense that you're targeting very, very specific muscles. And that consistent toning and contracting can impact, without a question, can impact facial shape. I've seen it. I've seen it kind of tighten things up and make things, you know, brows a little higher, cheeks a little higher, et cetera. The issue is that it's not long-term. And that's okay, especially if you're on the younger side or even if you're a little bit older and you're just doing this every night or however, you know, what the regimen and protocols are specifically around it, there's no harm in it. That much I can promise you. And if it does, give you a little bit of a tighter look, why not? I mean, people literally spend so much money on devices like Morpheus Aid and all therapy and all this kinds of thousands of dollars to get just a little bit of change. I mean, this is probably gonna give you, frankly, probably as much change, maybe a little bit less, who knows? I don't know, it's hard to quantify a little. Um, but at the end of the day, it's these devices aren't expensive. They're not dangerous. You're not gonna hurt yourself. You can hurt yourself with some of those energy devices. And I've had a lot of videos and discussions about that, the, the potential risks associated with those. This is not one of them. There's also some potential theoretical increased blood flow stimulation of collagen to the skin, et cetera. So all around, I would say if you can make time in your day to, to do this, it's a good general enhancement. It's by no means you know, a replacement for surgery. It's by no means a way to avoid surgery. You know, I know the founder, we've had lots of lives on our social media stuff, discussing all this stuff. She by no means tries to sell it as a surgical alternative, et cetera. She's very honest about the whole thing. And uh, frankly, I respect that. And I think the fact that it's been around for 20 plus years, or at least somewhere in that range, it goes to show people enjoy it and like it and they haven't thrown it out the way, you know, contour threads and artifil and all these other things that have come and then, you know, very strongly have been pushed away because of the, the negative impact that they've had. This definitely doesn't have it. So overall, not a bad treatment. Next is skin barrier health. Now you probably have heard this whole notion about the skin barrier. Skin barrier is basically the protective element of the skin. It keeps 
UV from this being able to impact the, the deeper skin. It's also what keeps pollutants from the environment from being able to pass through. The, the barrier function of the skin is very, very important. And that goes with good, healthy skin. And there's a lot of things that you can do to impact the skin barrier. Niacinamide, for example, good moisturizing, proper cleansing, all these things can impact the, the skin barrier function. And all around, it's definitely worth the time and energy to do that because if you can have a very healthy exchange of things that go in and out of cells and the overall environment is, is positive uh, and you're able to clear all the, the environmental pollutants off of your skin, all around, you're gonna win. That's a good thing. The things that can damage the skin barrier function are things like weather, things like you know harsh products and harsh cleansing that dry the skin and irritate the skin, complicated multi-step routines that are coming from everywhere and having all different impacts on the skin. All these things can definitely make a difference in the barrier function. So take that all in to get together and uh, do a little bit of homework on this particular topic, but definitely this is a big deal for us at CareMMD Skin to do the things that are gonna overall be healthy for the skin barrier and the skin barrier function. This is a trend I don't think is gonna, it's gonna do anything but become more and more aware and bring more and more attention on how to improve this, this uh, aspect of the skin. The next trend is energy devices. Folks, you've pr probably heard a video or two about this. These are things that are supposed to be facelift alternatives, things like radio frequency, things like ultrasound, things that are basically equivalent to like microwaving your face. I mean, you're literally pounding your face with, with energy that has been shown and discussed that can melt away vital subcutaneous fat that have very little effect on actual aging, have very little effect on tightening anything and can impact the skin in a very negative way as well. So this whole category of energy devices has definitely been one that has been getting lots of attention and is definitely one that I would like to see get less attention by the end of the year when we talk about um, you know, trends of 2024. The final trend, and this is one that I'm a big fan of, I don't know if I'm a big fan of it because you know I talk about it all the time and I hear about it, but it's actives, active skincare. So this is what it comes down to, folks. I have known for a long, long time, because I put my patients on very, very comprehensive and appropriate anti-aging skincare routines after or before I did their facial rejuvenation surgery. I use brands like Zio, Obagi, Skin Medica, all the kind of like big clinical brands. My office had all of these things. I put them all on it, and guess what? Skin always looked better. I mean, it was like miraculous, right? You like clarity, suppleness, fine lines and wrinkles, dullness, dryness, all that stuff improves. But the problem was I was required because of what was available to me to put patients on eight steps because by the time you put a person on a cleanser, a retinol, a vitamin C, a niacinamide, a peptide, you put them on a moisturizer, you put them on something that decreases pigmentation. You put them on something that balances the oils. And you know what, if you've got a, an extra finger or two, you might wanna put on something that exfoliates the skin. You're up to like eight or nine or 10 products, eight at a minimum. So as a result of that, very few people were able to maintain these type of regimens. So that's when I developed the CareMMD trifecta, which basically takes everything that I just said, takes eight you know, individual steps, and shove them into a three-step routine. A cleanser called Rinse, a vitamin C, a very potent and impactful vitamin C called Quench, and then an all-in-one anti-aging cream called Illuminate, which literally has all of the things that I just mentioned all together. Three steps, takes a couple minutes after you've washed your face, is a lot easier to maintain what is so, so important when it comes to actives, and that is consistency because as i mentioned when we talked about red light what you're trying to do is change the way the cells of the skin are functioning and in order to do that you need to turn certain things on like collagen production and you need to turn certain things off like pigmentation production pigment so when you're doing this you want consistency to keep the, those engines running in the cells to make more collagen, keep suppressing melanocytes, and then at the end, month after month after month, your skin looks better, more supple, fine lines and wrinkles, glow, all that stuff starts happening. But guess what, if you are in this kind of like ha habit of starting and stopping all the time, then every time something goes up, 
it stops. So the, your, your bump in collagen diminishes, your suppression of melanocytes, you know, starts to rise back up, you start to get pigmented again. So you really want to use these actives in a consistent way. If you do that, you'll win. And why it's kind of a trend is because people are getting smart. They're realizing that the very, very expensive, fancy you know, bottle you pick up at a department store that is literally nothing more than a lotion with no actives in it isn't doing you any good. And we're learning that actives actually can make bigger impact on the skin than even using lasers and things like that. Because again, like diet and exercise, it's the stuff you do every day that's gonna make the real, real impact. And let me just close that topic by saying that I think sun protection is making another really, really strong stand. And people are understanding that it's hats, sunscreen, that's the way you win the skin game. That's the way you can continue to enjoy the outdoors, live life to your fullest, do everything you wanna do, but just don't get pounded by UVA and UVB light. And if you do that, you decrease the breakdown of collagen, you decrease the production of all the melanin and the pigments that are formed. Skin's gonna be less dry, less evaporative loss, all the things that help the barrier function, as I mentioned, all that is important. Starts with sun protection. So folks, those are some big trends in 2023, heading into 2024. You get my feeling on it, right? I mean, for the most part, I'm a big fan of, of essentially all of them. We'll see what happens to Snail Mucin down the road. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, uh, make sure you hit like. If you haven't already, hit subscribe. You know, videos like this and surgical rejuvenation videos are, are made literally on a, on a weekly basis in addition to shorts. Make sure you don't miss any. Hit notifications so you can receive them. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below. Share this with some friends and family. Get the word out. Let's empower everyone. And uh, finally, if you want a little bit more information about skin that is written by me and delivered to your email inbox, sign up for the CaramMD Journal. It's a really a passion project of mine, but I love writing and I love sharing and, and putting things in a very simple way, useful information that you can actually use to become more informed and empowered so you can always make good decisions. Folks, my pleasure. Hope you all uh, enjoyed that. And we're, you know, right around the holidays. So happy holidays and uh, happy new year. See you on the other side. Dr. Amir Karam.